Hey y'all, it's Christy Cook from Tea Dottles. It's time for episode 13 of Tea Dottles Talks. Um, I'd like to say welcome new subscribers and welcome back subscribers. I'm glad to have y'all here with me as I talk about my crafty adventures. <laughs> um, and this is a podcast for all sorts of things. Um, crochet, yarn talk, fabric, sewing, um, DIY projects, um, just a little bit of everything. I, although I do tend to lean more towards the fiber arts, I do like to do a lot of different things. Um, if you are looking for me on any kind of social media, just look for Tea Doddles. That is what my name is on anything that I'm on. Uh, let's see, Instagram, Ravelry, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Plus, which is still here, but I thought it was going away. I don't know. YouTube, and I have an Etsy shop, and I have a website. So, all of that is under Tea Doddles. That's where you'll find me. Um... I do have an email listed below if you would like to email me about anything. Uh, so yeah, I think that's all. What do they call that? Admin? Podcast admin? Something like that. I don't know. Let's just try to get that stuff out of the way so I don't forget to do it. Because sometimes I forget to do it. <laughs> so, if you... Uh, enjoying the videos think about subscribing and liking please like the videos it does uh, it just helps uh, people get seen by more people people get seen by more people it helps me and others get seen by more people and so then we can find more crafty people to talk to right um, and if, if you have ads it helps with that too so today I'm drinking out of my get your own mug cup this is very fresh coffee. I don't know if you can see the steam coming off of it, but <sighs> so good. This is my second cup. Yes, I do consider this one cup, although it's large. <laughs> I need at least two of these a day, at least. Um, and I'm just drinking some. Uh, our local Ollie's, which is like a discount store, they have a brand of coffee they carry, and they had this huge box during the holidays of different flavors uh, for twenty dollars. And I think it was like no, it was like sixty or so pods because I have a Keurig. So this is their donut shop version, which is okay. It's okay, um, and I do have some hazelnut creamer in here today because. I'm trying to stop drinking flavored creamers and just do heavy cream <laughs> in my coffee. I know that seems odd, but just to move away from the sugar a bit. I'm not trying to cut out sugar completely, but I'm trying to cut it out of my coffee some. Um, and hazelnut is my husband's favorite, so I didn't, I didn't buy me a flavored coffee creamer, but my first cup did have the heavy cream and not any sugar. Um, if you needed to know that for some reason. So, um, let's see. This week has been my first week back to class. Uh, Monday and Tuesday was pretty easy because I only had an afternoon class. Although for Monday, for some reason, I forgot that it was uh, blog post time. Y'all, I always get my computer sitting here. It gives me a weird glow, so there, there, I got it turned down. Alright. Um, I don't know why. I guess because I've been off from my regular routine of school for so long. It was a very long break. It was three weeks long, which was long. And then, Tuesday, I said, well, I'll do my blog post Tuesday. It's fine. And I was going to do a tutorial Tuesday. My internet was out, of course. Just out. Of course, I could have recorded and uploaded later, but I was just exasperated with the whole thing. So, I thought, well, I'll do tutorial Thursday. 
Did that happen? No, it did not. Because let's see, Wednesday and Thursday were my first two days of my morning class and afternoon class. So morning class, I have to drive about 45 minutes away. So I was pooped those two days because I had to get up super early, which I had gotten out of the habit of doing. <laughs> I tried to get back on that track before school started back, but I just, it was hard y'all. Just, it just was hard. And I got cold again this week, which I was glad to see the cold weather back because it had gotten up in the seventies the past couple of weeks. It felt like spring instead of winter. So I was happy to see the cold weather back. Today is a very cloudy, murky, not necessarily murky, but icy kind of feeling day. There's rain coming and it's cold. So it's a good day to stay inside and make stuff, right? Yes. Um, so my classes went pretty good. Wednesday was pretty busy because a lot of my students needed schedule changes and things like that, which made for a hectic morning. Um, but I was happy to see some of my returning students and some new students. I have a student that is in his seventies this year or this semester, which is quite interesting. Um, he's not looking to get another degree or anything. He just wants to learn to do drafting on the computer so he can build a house. So I'm a fairly eclectic group this semester. Um, I'm looking forward to getting to know them all. Um, my son started his first week of school this week as well. Um, things went pretty good the first day of him riding the MARTA, which is a train. Uh, it's a bus system and train system and a uh, public transportation system in Atlanta is what that is. It's called the MARTA. And uh, he, everything went great the first day. The second day, he realized the buses do come at 30 minute increments, but they're not always going the direction that he wants to go. <laughs> and so he was 30 minutes late getting on the bus. And then in the train station, he wound up getting in the wrong train because uh, the sign wasn't up or the where it tells you what it is wasn't working right. And he was 40 minutes late to class because he got all messed up. So. But I told him at least it didn't happen his first day, which I think would be harder because you're expecting bad things to happen. His first day went really great, so it didn't happen to his second day. So I don't think it would made him as upset as it would have if it had been his first day. So, um, so he's excited about his new classes. Uh, uh, yeah, he's doing well. Uh, he keeps sending me pictures out the back of his out his window because he's on the ninth floor and he can look across the hospital behind them and he can see the city skyline he really likes that he did say that the hel medical helicopter landed on the hospital the other day it was very loud and he was glad that did not happen all the time so but it was interesting to see so um yeah i think that's really all no I have one more thing for kind of life news. If you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen in my stories yesterday evening that I've decided to do face mask Friday. <laughs> I have a bunch of face masks I have accumulated because last year I bought the Target beauty boxes and I got Walmart beauty boxes and I just never wound up using them. This year, I don't think I'm doing the Target Beauty Boxes because I just accumulated a bunch of stuff that I gave away a bunch of at Christmas, which was nice, but I just don't need all that stuff accumulating. Um, so I decided on Fridays, I would do a face mask and try them out and post it in my stories on Instagram. But this one was quite interesting. This is the first one I tried. It's a black charcoal bubble sheet mask. And this is a, it's an actual fabric or whatever it's made out of. It was black and you put it on your face. It has holes for your eyes and nose and mouth. 
but this was very it's like covered in a soapy like substance when you pull it out and when you put it on your face it was very cold when I put it on my face I was already cold so I, that was a little bit of a shock to my system I didn't expect it to be so cold because it was in this this thing but uh and then these bubbles start forming on the fabric of the mask and you can feel them like they're like oxygen it's oxygenating mask for dull and tired skin what did they call them they call them micro oxygen bubbles combined with pure fine, pure a fine black charcoal but you can feel that and it's so weird because in my stories i showed a picture when i first put it on and then when the bubbles they kind of grow it's like they just keep getting more bubbles <laughs> and you can feel it and it, it kind of starts sliding into the the holes of the mask because it gets so big it was a very strange feeling and i didn't leave it on i'm i'm sure i left it on for the five it says five to ten minutes i wanted to leave it on longer but i just couldn't it was so weird feeling so when i took it off and there's another picture where the, there's there were still bubbles on my face and i could still feel them like it's like they're popping like little tiny bubbles popping all over your face and you can hear it it's kind of like rice crispy cereal <laughs> that's what it sounded like but uh it's an odd mask. I've never tried one before. Um, my face, I could see some red patches when I took it off, but I was worried I was having an allergic reaction because I never know how things are going to affect me sometimes. But my husband said maybe it was just bringing the circulation to your skin, which it must have been because it went away after a little bit. It wasn't itchy or anything, so my skin did feel very soft afterwards. So. That was interesting so if you haven't ever tried one maybe you should check it out um i don't know how much these cost otherwise i'll try to find a link to them from target because i think i'm sure this came out of a target beauty box but so if you want to see me look weird while wearing mask on friday night <laughs> check out my insta stories <laughs> i'm going to try to start putting other things in there besides that but that was just something that I was like hey I really need to do this and I said hey, I could have a face mask Friday why not share it with the world okay so I'm adding this in the middle of stuff because I forgot to say some things uh, so if things look a little different when you look back at when you when it slices in that's why but one thing I was going to say, a uh, public service announcement. <laughs> if you do not use Ibotta, Ibotta, um, it's an app you can put on your phone. I'm not sure if it's available worldwide or if it's only in the States. But you, uh, it's, it gives you a percent back or it gives you money back on certain purchases. It's kind of like that. It's kind of a money back app, but I've used it for a long time. Um, but the main reason I want to tell y'all about it is because if you shop at Joann's at all, you need to have this app because quite regularly they have a 15% back from your Joann's purchase. It's only in store. Uh, so even after you get all your discounts and stuff in the store, whatever your total is, you can get 15% more back in the app. And uh, you can transfer that money to a PayPal account or whatever, which you can use to buy more yarn if you want to or whatever you want to buy. I'm just saying. Um, but they also have some certain amounts back on certain products, like the Big Twist yarn and stuff like that and different things in there. But I always use the 15%. Um, back i'm gonna put that in my description below and in my show notes because um if you use my link i get like a bonus if you when you do your first purchase but you also get a bonus if you've never used it before i think it's like ten dollars with your first purchase or something like that so i wanted to say that because it's always nice to get percent back of something you bought 
and 15% is a pretty good amount. Um, my other thing that I wanted to say is that I, um, next month is Valentine's Day on the 14th. And I wanted to say that if you would like me to send you a Valentine card, maybe a little extra goodie, not anything too major, just, you know, small. Uh, you can email me at my email address below. Uh, tell me, well, you'd have to send me your address, obviously, and your favorite craft. You know, maybe you want to tell me some more about yourself. That's okay, too. But if you'd like me to send you a Valentine's Day card, uh, shoot me an email and let me know. Um, I think it'd be exciting. It's almost like starting a pen pal with someone. So, uh, yeah, that was what I wanted to say that I forgot to say until I started editing my video, which is crazy. But, uh, so email me your address and what kind of craft you like. And if you want to talk about yourself some more, go feel free. Uh, and I will send you a Valentine card. I'm telling you early so that I can try to get a, to know how many I have. I need to know before, what, like the first Monday in February. I'll say it again on another podcast, but, so, you want a, you want a Valentine's Day card from, from me? Go ahead and send me your address and I'll send you one. All right, so that's my, my little interlude back to the regularly scheduled program. The only other thing is, and I'm going to talk about this some in my other sections, is that I've been really working on cleaning up and clearing out my craft space. I'm very excited because things are looking much better. It just feels clean and refreshed, which is always nice. Um, done some vacuum in here. I really need to do some more because it ha I hardly ever vacuum in here because, which I should do more regularly because it has carpet and thread and stuff just builds up everywhere and then my socks are covered in thread and when I wash them it doesn't come out I've noticed that if I'm walking around in my socks so anyway um so yeah I'm gonna talk some more about that in my other segments okay it's time for yarny goodness that was a quick intro, much quicker than it's been the past two weeks, right? So, I said in the, I've said before that I've put myself on a craft buying restriction until March, which is spring. That means I can only purchase things if I need them to finish a project, okay? I can't just buy it because, oh, it's so pretty and it's on sale. Yay. Because, y'all, I'm going to show, I'm going to insert a little video I did earlier of the big box I have full of yarn that is to be donated or for giveaways. Lots and lots of different yarns in here. All kinds of stuff. There's some the cotton and just a little bit of everything in here um, and that is just a small portion fraction compared to what I actually have I did do an Excel chart and I have a total yardage of yarn which does not even include works in progress and some of that yarn that's in that giveaway box because I figure it will be included in my yardage until it's it's actually gone out of my space so my goal for the yarn is to reduce the yardage by half and when you see how much it is you will realize that that's gonna be quite a task and I go by yardage I know some people go by weight but yardage for me when I'm looking at a project I always look at the yardage because that's more likely to let me know how much yarn I actually need. If I'm if I'm picking the weight that is required by the pattern, I don't want to go by ounces because that that's based on whatever fiber is in it and everything, and you get different yardages per ounce. So I go by the yardage because if I can get more, 
if I have a little more than that yardage, I should be fine. Um, if Especially if I'm using a different yarn than what the pattern calls for. Because everybody crochets at different tensions. Um, although, I, I am intent, intent, if, if that's the right word. Is that the right word? I don't know. On learning how to knit this year. I had it as a goal last year. Never picked it up. Never, never. I think... Because the needles I have, I have a whole bunch of knitting needles, but they are the long metal ones that I got at Walmart. I didn't know anything about knitting. And I've tried to knit with those, and I think that's part of my problem because they're so huge that it's just weird to have this big thing sticking out while you're trying to knit. So I do have some larger circular needles, but they're like really big ones. I don't know why I have those even. But then I have the bamboo ones or wood ones, whatever they are, I got from Darn Good Yarn. So I'm going to try knitting with those and see how that goes before I purchase some nicer needles. Because everybody says you should get the nicer needles. But I want to see if I'm even going to, I do want to learn how to knit and I want to make things with it. My ultimate goal is to make a pattern that combines knitting and crochet. That's my ultimate goal. I have this these things in my head. So, we'll see how that goes. Because I am working on, I want to do some patterns. I'm, I want to do an afghan pattern before I move on to trying to do garments. Um, and by the way, let's talk about the, what is it, the monkey in the room? What do they say? I'm not saying that right. Anyway, I finished my cardigan. Check it out. I'm excited. I will say... I'm going to stand up so you can see the bottom of it. I haven't washed this yet. It needs to be washed. But I did wear it to school yesterday. It is long enough. It comes down quite well. I'm trying to back up. And stand on my tiptoes. Let's see if y'all can see this. Um, the pockets. I thought they were going to be too small at first. But they're just right for sticking your hands in. Just like that. I don't like where they hit me. They hit me at one where it starts getting the biggest on me and they're poofy, but, and then you can't really see it, but you see how the bottoms are curling like this? I don't like that. And that's because you use a smaller hook on this uh, collar and facing stuff um, than you did on the rest of the project. This was a, an N or nine millimeter hook on the just about the whole thing except for this collar and button band which dropped to a J six millimeter hook which I probably could have gone in between there or something to keep this that's why it's drawing up so much because it's such a tight so much of a tighter stitch but I'm hoping when I wash this and I may try to pin down that front to, to, to get that out of there but um I really like it. It's very comfy and cozy. I've gotten way over here. Try to get more even. There we go. I do try to leave one side a little free so when I put stuff up here, it's not over my head. <laughs> it works sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't. But I, I also am not fond of the way this looks. I thought it would have ribbing more like what's on the bottom but that's not how you did that so I really don't like it kind of poofs right here as you're looking at it but uh I don't know it's the way they did the stitches here and I didn't change anything because I had a kit and I was worried that I wouldn't have enough yarn if I made any changes so um and I also like some things I did like about it. This pattern is very easy to do. Because you make the whole body. You start at the bottom with the band. You make the whole body. And then you go up one side for a panel. Then you join yarn and do the middle panel. Join yarn and do the other panel. And then you the only seam on this is uh, where you join the front and back panels. I'm going to take this off so you can I can show you all that. I just, I like to use a slip stitch when I'm seaming things and then weaving my ends really good. I don't like, uh, I did use, 
a different stitch or set of pockets on. You can see that I, since I had two, I knotted that and knotted and so I, didn't, I was being lazy, but that's okay. Nobody sees that usually, but there's my seam right across here. And like I said, I just slip stitch them together. I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, this is what it looks like on the outside. Yeah. At that seam. It's hard to tell where it is, but it's right there. That's where it's at. So I think that turned out pretty good. Um, because as long as I've been crocheting, this is only the second thing I've made with sleeves that you have to, because the other things I've made that are wraps and stuff, it's more just a rectangle that you seam up. It's not really a sleeve you're adding. So, um, because the other one is that sweater I showed y'all a while back that I made when I was a teenager and didn't have any idea what yarn I should use so nobody's ever worn that sweater. But... This is the year of the sweater, so I have one finished. Yay! It's a cardigan, but it's still a sweater. Um, and when you make this, a lot of times they'll have you make the sleeve panel, basically, and then you have to seam up under the arm and seam it into the, the hole, the, the armhole. But this one, you join the yarn at the armpit, and you put in so many stitches and then you just work you're not working in the round you are working in the round but you go one direction then you go back the other direction that's how you do it so it makes a I don't know if you can see this he kind of looks like a seam on the bottom you can see it looks like that because you go back and forth instead of going around and I think that just keeps your stitches from Sometimes when you crochet in the round, things can start leaning. Uh, so this keeps it from doing that. So I liked that because you just joined it after you did that one seam. And then by the time you got to the end, you had your sleeve. You didn't have to seam anything else. So that was awesome. Um, the only other thing I had to did have to sew on was the pockets. And I worked really hard to try to get them aligned with I feel like my tension was different because than the, the sweater itself but I was trying to align the the little ridges that are in it I think I did a pretty good job um, and I just sewed this I'm not gonna be able to see it because I you can kind of see it right here we'll see it's like a whip stitch but I didn't not really a whip stitch because a whip stitch you you would pick up the thing and you put the yarn through the loop that's made when you are stitching but I didn't want that extra in there so I just picked up the two stitches and just so 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 it's um yeah and then I wove in my ends I wove in the end where I started in the back side of the pocket so it wouldn't be as noticeable <laughs> And when I weave in, in my ends, I use a darning needle. I actually think I learned this off of the Mikey. Mikey from Crochet Yarn Inspirations or something like that. There were, he was, I was watching one of those videos and he was talking about weaving in ends. And what he does is he goes one way for so long and then back that way and then back again. He goes back and forth three times with it because that keeps it from pulling out, which made total sense to me. Because a long time ago, I made a whole Christmas afghan. I think I've showed it on here before with different squares and I sewed it all together. So fabulous. It had a border. First time I washed it, it came apart. Like there was a bunch of holes in it that where the stuff had come apart because I didn't. I didn't weave it in properly so now I know how to do it and it makes total sense because that keeps the yarn from coming back out from working its way back out no matter how slippery your yarn is and I also try to go between the yarn fibers in some places 
and that just really helps hold it in. And when I come back, I'll go through the yarn fiber of what I went down one way with. Maybe that makes sense. <laughs> Maybe I should do a tutorial on that and just show how I do it to try to prevent stuff from coming apart, right? And from showing. Um, so I think these pockets went on fairly well. I'm going to put this back on because it's, it's chilly in here. Um, so this is a really easy cardigan pattern. I will say that it is on what is now Blueprint. It used to be Craftsy. And I've heard a lot of people talk about they couldn't find patterns or they eliminated all the patterns. They didn't eliminate all the patterns. They actually have a My Shop Blueprint website and then they have a Blueprint website. The Blueprint website is for if you subscribe to their video service. The My Shop Blueprint website is where you can still find all the products and patterns. There are far less patterns, I will say, because I did hear some say that, or read in comments or whatever, that they only have patterns from the designers in their videos, but that's not true either. I do know they reduced, like some people who had 40, 400, whatever, they reduced them down to three patterns and stuff. So they did reduce that quite a bit. And while I can understand the need to do that probably for them, because that's a lot to hold on a server that's not being paid for, I do feel like they still should have given people more notice than they did. And maybe let the people, if they're saying, okay, you can only keep three out of your 40 patterns, which three do you want to keep? Maybe they should let them decide that. Um, I've decided to keep working with them for now. Um, if they do something else jerky like that, I will not have them as an affiliate anymore. But for now, I'm going to chalk it up to growing pains, if that makes any sense. Um, uh, and some people may not agree with me and that's okay. But, um, I do still like a lot of their products. Um, I did unsubscribe from their video service, but that's only because I'm looking into the Ideal Me one that I signed up for, or the Maker You, so I don't want to have both of them at the same time, so I did enjoy some of the stuff I have, and I do still have all of the ones, any classes I've, I've purchased I have, any patterns I've purchased I've had, they may not have a picture there anymore, but I downloaded them all, and I, I I had all the, I didn't have any problems getting the patterns that I had purchased. Um, so, yeah, that's 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 my story, and I'm sticking to it. But anyway, this pattern you can't buy the kit anymore. Um, but they do have this pattern still on there. It is the one piece sporty jacket by Nicole Wang. It's six dollars. Um, and it, let's see, I, I made the, uh, extra large, the large extra large. I think that's what it was. And it took 10 skeins of this sprightly super bulky, which I really do enjoy this yarn. It isn't, it isn't acrylic, but it's super soft and squishy and comfortable. And I love working with it. I've made so many things with it. Um, so this is the color misty purple. Um, they have a lot of colors to choose from, but I just really liked this. Um, so that pattern is available. I will put a link in my show notes. Y'all, I don't think I did show notes. I don't think I ever went back and did show notes for last week's podcast because it was so, I was trying to save time because I recorded it later and I thought, well, I'll upload it directly to YouTube from my video uh, editor. No, no, it took forever. It was after midnight before that uploaded, and I started it like 5 36 o'clock doing that. I was like, so that's why it didn't come out until Sunday morning. But this, today I'm not doing that because I don't understand. Uh, my upload speed's not great on my internet, but like the. <clears throat> I've noticed when I did my yarn haul. Ha blah, blah, blah. My yarn haul video this week that it was only uh, I think it was less than 10 minutes it still took an hour and a half to upload to YouTube 
it takes an hour and a half to two hours to upload my hour podcast. So I'm like, what? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But it didn't take that long to come out of my editor. So you know, I don't know. Always something crazy. But anyway, let's get back to the yarn. So <clears throat> my yarn haul video was, oh, one more thing about this. This does have buttons. It has loops for toggle buttons that you can put, but I don't, I didn't want buttons on it. So I didn't put them on there. So I would never have been buttoning it anyway. So, but you can do that. That is a choice on the pattern. So, and the other thing about the pattern, they don't give you instructions on sewing on the pockets. They tell you how to make the pockets and then they just tell you to attach them. <laughs> so that's something you would have to figure out. It was fairly easy to do though, but I've had experience doing things like that. So, um, yeah, that was something that I felt was lacking a little bit. Um, um, I am going to show, reshow the yarn I did in my yarn haul, just in case you didn't get to see that for some reason. Um, and technically I bought it before the end of the year. So I haven't purchased any yarn this year, except for yarn boxes. Those are the only thing I'm keeping. I have my Jimmy Bean yarn box, my Mary Maxim yarn club, and I'm doing on Etsy where I get a hand dyed yarn club, a different one once a month. So I can look at some of those different dyers and see what they got. I haven't received, some of the stuff will probably be here today, but it'll be after our, it may not be here till later this afternoon. I couldn't wait on it. So you can look at my Instagram for pictures if you want to see those sooner rather than later. So I'm going to show what, these were the mystery bags I got from Premier Yarns. I'd been wanting to try some of their yarn. I just never did it. Um, I really wanted some sweet, sweet rolls and the Candy Shop yarns where it's really colorful and it has the twisted color. And other people who had opened, other people who had opened their bags had got those, but I did not get any. So I was sad about that. So, oh well. But I ordered a DK weight or number three, a worsted number four, and a bulky number five, which the number five actually had a number five and a number six in it. So, um, I just felt like I could open up the bag a little bit and show you the thing. So this is the bulky, but this one's actually a number six yarn, super bulky. So this was the mega tweed. Uh, Premier Yarns. It is only 74 yards, 6 ounces, 68 meters, 170 grams, 97% acrylic, 3% viscose. So, it's very soft, actually. And I love the tweediness to it. Um, they have a scarf pattern on there that I kind of like. But it has two colors, but I don't know what I'm going to do with this yet, but it's, it is actually really soft. So that was, I got three of these. So I really did like that one. And the other one in this, sorry about the plastic, y'all. The other one, I actually wound up with six of these fun furs instead of three. That was kind of a bonus. So I got six of these and three of these in the one bag. Um, this is the Lash Lux. It's pretty soft. It's not as soft as some of this stuff is. This is their kind of like an eyelash fun fur yarn. This is Dynasty. Um, I think this 33 yards, 30 meters, 1.75 ounces, 50 grams. It is 100% polyester. So, um, I have some ideas for what I want to do with some of this. I doubt I'll use all of this. Some of this may wind up in my donate giveaway box. So, 
because I have so much of it. They gave me six, six games of it. And I forgot to say what color this is. This tweeted yarn was brown tweed. That's all it's called. So nothing, nothing fancy. Okay, now that I fault the yarn back in the bag, let's take a look at the other one. Um, Cause on my yarn haul, I didn't take any of these out of the plastic. So I noticed it was kind of hard to see some of the colors, but this is the DK weight bag. I got three of these. This is the color Bird Bath, 100% acrylic Angel is what it's called. 260 meters, 284 yards, three and a half ounces or a hundred grams. So this is kind of purpley and teal, but pale colors. And it's, it's twisted with a white yarn. So it's definitely something I would consider for a baby project. Um, I don't know of any babies I need to make anything for, but I do have a yarny friend that lives in Florida that could find, may find this useful. So we'll see how that goes with that one. Oh, and I noticed, it seems like there's some areas that have some brownish color in it or grayish color. And this one down at the bottom, well, that one too. So it seems like it has another color in there. Can you? Well, that one's hard to see. You can kind of see it there. You see how that's a little bit darker than the purple? So it has a little bit of uh, that in it. And the other one I got in here, which I really love, I will probably, since this is a DK weight, I may be able to make like a, like a t-shirt sweater or a tank tops sort of thing. We'll see. But I do like it. It's fairly soft to have the metallic in it. Um, this is the Downtown Abbey Lady Mary um, in Cobalt Twinkle. It is a DK weight, number three. 95% acrylic and 5% metallic. 290 yards, 266 meters, 85 grams or three ounces. Look at that sparkle. Oh, you can see it really good. It does have quite a bit of sparkle in it. Um, it's kind of a netted looking thread, if that makes any sense. It almost looks like, I don't know if y'all going to be able to see that, but it almost looks like it's chained. Like someone made a chain out of a smaller thread and then made a thread out of it. That's kind of what it looks like. So, that one I really like. Now, we'll let's fight with the bags again. Okay, finally, here's the number four bag. I tried to avoid some of the plastic rattling on camera. But, this is a Make the Fashion Deborah Norville Collection Everyday Soft Worsted Go Team is what it says. It's anti-peeling acrylic. Fiesta is the color, but it looks very much like Christmas colors to me. I don't know what team that's supposed to be. Of course, I don't follow sports, so maybe somebody out there knows. I don't know. If it's for Team Christmas, I'm all about it. I like Christmas. Uh... <laughs> 180 yards, 165 meters, three and a half ounces, 100 grams. So it's pretty soft. I don't know what I would make with that. It's soft and I kind of like it, but I kind of, those are like Christmas, Christmas colors. If you think about Christmas, that's the colors you usually think about. They're not my favorite, I'm gonna be honest. Um, but. For some reason, this wasn't in an extra plastic bag. This is Premier Yarn's Everyday Anti-Peeling Acrylic. 180 yards, 165 meters, 3.5 ounces, 100 grams. That seems to be typical, 3.5 ounces, 100 grams, 3.5 ounces, the weight. So, um, this is the color Fog Heather. I really like it. It's very soft. 
very very soft but this one I did like a lot so um yeah so that was what was in those bags those bags are ten dollars each and I think some people said they caught them on sale for $7.99 during Christmas or something so I'm gonna look for that again because um, it is a good price at the ten dollars just be sure that you catch it on a day when they have free sh or shipping, $5 shipping or something, or free shipping if you spend over $25 because I didn't, and I paid $10.45 for shipping, although I did take $5 off with my gift card I had because their typical shipping is based on the amount you spend, which I don't understand how people figure that. That's ridiculous because... It could weigh hardly anything or it could weigh a ton and I guess that's how they average it out I don't know but anyway I will put links to it they are not an affiliate of mine I don't know if they have an affiliate program I have looked for one but I haven't seen one so I'm trying to get more affiliates more craft related affiliates um which reminds me I didn't talk about an affiliate in the beginning Hmm, what am I going to do about that? I don't know. Maybe I'll add it in. Maybe not. Um, so, one other thing that I did order before the end of the year at Darn Good Yarn, I had a $25 in gift cards. <laughs> because if you are a member of one of their monthly clubs, you, you, you can get, you can sign up for their Karma karma points club or karma points if you're you sign up for an account which is free um so you get so many points for every dollar you spend and then you can you can uh exchange those for gift cards um or products depending on how much you want to save up so when you're in a, a club with them you actually get Extra, you get more points per dollar you spend and and the club the money you spend on the club counts towards that so um i think for every 500 points you have you get five dollars so every so it must be 10 or 20 points i don't know i feel like i got 100 or better points for each club that i paid for each monthly club i paid for so anyway i decided to spend those I was going to put it towards uh, the fabric club I signed up for with them for this year, but you can't do that. You can put some discounts on it though, but you can't put gift cards towards it, which is weird, but it doesn't matter. Um, so what I decided to get, I always get a mystery item whenever I order from Darn Good Yarns because you get a $15 product for $5. <clears throat> you never know what it is but it's always something good usually but what I decided to buy with my $25 was Malabrigo yarn I showed a picture on Instagram look at it it's so pretty oh it's so pretty look at that and it does smell good too um this is 870 canned, candomed, can, I'm going to put it up there. That's a weird word. That's what it is. That's the color. Because this is the only one they had that wasn't a solid color. This is a sock yarn. It has 440 yards, three and a half ounces. Um, I, what is it made out of? Okay, kettle dyed pure super wash merino wool. So, it says machine washable and dry flat, but I won't be making socks out of this. I have some other fancy sock yarn over there, and I just can't see making socks out of it to wear. <laughs> I'll be using it for something else. I don't know what yet, but I love the colors on this. This was like $18.50 for a skein of this. I don't know what it runs anywhere else, but they only have two solid colors left. They're sold out of most everything. I don't know if they're getting more or what they're doing, but I really like this. So I got this. It says I had 
I also ordered a mystery item, which was a pom-pom kit. It's a DIY pom-pom pom -pom kit, which is something new that they have on the site. Gotta dump everything out. So, you get two pieces of faux fur. And these are so soft. So soft. And you get the little poofs to put inside. And then you get this little kit with it. It has... It has the snaps, like big snaps to hold it to the hat, so you can, it's removable. It has a tube with needles in it and the thread wrapped around the, the tube. So, it has everything you need to make the pom-pom. Uh, yeah. The only thing I noticed is there's no instructions in this kit, but I'm fairly certain the instructions are on the website. So, um, I will have that link in uh, my show notes. Uh, Darn Good Yarn is an affiliate of mine. I really like the company. They are, they do good things. You should really check out their about page and stuff. Um, I did stop the yarn club this year, but that's because I did it last year and I was just accumulating yarn. I don't like the patterns always that they give because you only get the one skein of yarn, which is fine. It's only a $10 club and it's it's silk yarn is typically what it is. Um, and you get some little doodahs in there. But, and it is a knit and crochet pattern. So you get a knit and crochet pattern of the, the version of the pattern that you get. Um, I wish they would do something similar to Jimmy Beans where you get yarn for three months to make a bigger project maybe um but it is nice to try the different yarns and stuff i have used some of it um i just felt like i was just accumulating yarn and not doing anything with it so i decided to drop the yarn club but i have joined the fabric club which i'll talk about more in my next segment but um you should definitely check them out they do good things um they did move warehouses last year, which was part of the problem with their shipping and things. So, hopefully this year will be a better year for them and their shipping. Let's see. Do I have anything else to show yarn related? Oh, I do. Um, works in progress. I did start another cowl. Uh, the Autumn Infinity. Well, it's not a cowl. It's an infinity scarf. I started another one, but I didn't bring it over here. It's the same as the ones I showed you last week. I'm just trying to use all that yarn. And that's what I'm making with all of it. So, um, that is a dent that I'm making in my accumulation. Um, I have put in some more rows on my Moreland blanket. I said I was going to finish this before the end of the year. Not the end of the year. The end of the month. It's been hanging around since 2016. I have finally made it to the blues. Let me get this out of here without. Alright. Let's move this out of the way. Alright. So these are the only colors I have left to put in. Besides the one attached to here. I'm in the blues. I got a little bit of purple left. Um, there were 15 skeins of yarn in there. Just so you know. This is called Storm Blue. I think it's one of my favorites. But. Let's see. Where, where, where is the top of this? So I'm into the sky. Look at that. It's so pretty. So this blanket or afghan, it starts down here. You have more earthy green tones and then you get some purples in there for lavender fields. And then it gets lighter as you go up. And here we are. At the top, we're in the sky. So I just have sky colors left. I'm on I did my last row of green the other day, and I've started this row of this storm blue color. Let's see. Had to had to dig out my booklet that I have where I have my rows charted. I have I 
I have 21 color rows left, which that's actually 42 rows. Um, that may seem like a lot, but this has 115 times two. So this has 230 rows all together. So very close. You can see I'm almost, I've got to finish this row, which is actually these right here. And then I have this to do. So it worked. It's a pretty, it's a really easy pattern to memorize and go through. I also have a border to do. It has a border. Um, which that's the part that I feel like it's going to take forever because it's a big thing to go around and I'm probably going to have to go around more than once, but I'm almost done. And just so you know, this is a DK weight yarn, <laughs> which is part of the reason it's taken me so long. I've never made an afghan with a DK weight. I've worsted is the smallest I've made one with. So that means it's a number three. So this is pretty small. So, but I'm excited because... I'll probably work on this while I edit this video, and that'll be fun. Okay, finally got it back in the bag. And, uh, oh, the only other thing I wanted to say, I had said that I want to cut the yardage of my yarn stash in half this year. I wanted to tell you what my yardage is. And this does not include... The new yarns I just showed you because I haven't put them in there yet. Um, or all of the yarn that's in the giveaway box or donation box because I put some of it in here but not all of it. It also doesn't include all my whips. So, so this is the total I have thus far with more to be added. Uh, the total yardage in my stash is 55,272 yards. <laughs> That's a lot. Um, I was going, uh, there's several swe sweaters I want to make, which in my size takes about 1,700 yards. And I think that's a number two or, or so uh, weight. I could make about... Which, all the yarn's not the same weight, obviously, but that's like 35 or 36 sweaters. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a lot. Um, this sweater that I'm wearing, this cardigan that I'm wearing, the total yards in yarn I had was 1,090. And I did wind up with, each of those balls was 3.5 ounces. Uh, but I wound up with 2.8 ounces left, so almost a whole skein left. Um, and that translates to about 87 yards. So, that afghan I just showed you, the Moreland afghan, um, the total yardage of yarn that I have for it is 4,830 yards. So, those, those quantities are not included in my stash because they're technically being used right now. But I'm, I will have leftovers, and I will calculate that too. So that, that's where I'm at at this point in time. That doesn't include those three mystery bags I just got from <laughs> Premier Yarn or the Malabrigo Yarn. So it's going to go up before it goes down. But my goal is to cut that in half by the end of the year, year taking into account that I will probably bring in more yarn. I will most certainly bring in more yarn because... I have one, two, three yarn clubs basically going. And I also, ooh, I didn't even include like the Mary Maxim kits and the other kits that I have that I haven't crocheted. So those aren't in there. Uh, so anyway, I'll, I'll have the clubs coming in. And then I will also have, when my yarn restriction is lifted, I'm sure I will buy a big, I'm planning on buying a sweater quantity of something since this is the year of the sweater. So, um, we'll see how much I can reduce. Because to reduce it, I, it would be, what is that, 25, 20, 26, 27,000? Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot. So, that, that's my goal for the year. We'll see how it goes. Um, now, I think, yeah. 
Okay, time for Fabric Obsessed. Um, I am disappointed. Er, that's my disappointed face. Because my Taylor Lily Fat Quarter Club has not arrived yet. Um, I did get notification that it's finally... It's like forever it said it was going from one facility to the other and it would be later than expected. So I don't know what happened. I feel like it got sent to the wrong place and then had to be rerouted. So I think I should be getting it today. Hopefully. Um, but I don't know. It could be Monday because it was in their Macon Center yesterday morning or this morning. Yesterday morning. Yesterday afternoon. Sometime. Anyway. So I don't have that to show you. I haven't received the Darn Good Yarn Fabric Club month yet. But that doesn't usually ship out till later in the month anyway. So I didn't expect to have that. But I do have a few other things to show you. Um, I haven't been sewing. I've been crocheting. Uh, but I am going to be making some bags for the shop to update. Hopefully I will get them finished this weekend and get it updated soon. But I will have an update before the end of the month because I'm going to put some wintry kind of looking bags in there or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I may sneak in a few springy looking ones. We'll see how it goes. So those are coming. Uh, but otherwise, the only other things I have to show are some works in progress and some things I'm about to cut out, if that makes sense. <laughs> Um, let's see. We're going to move this because it's on top of this other thing. Okay, so I have been... <sighs> I will insert a little bit of a pile of t-shirt pieces that I have for making t-shirt quilts and stuff. Here's all the t-shirts. Or t-shirt parts I still have to cut up to make yarn and scraps with. Yay! And that doesn't even include this huge box I have of leftovers from making that baby clothes quilt that I made last year. Which I don't have any idea what I'm going to do with all that. I don't know if I'll be able to use it all. But for now, I have spent a, quite a bit of time cutting up knit scraps like anything that has a bunch of holes in it because repairing knit is not an easy thing it depends on what the, the fabric what the shirt or piece of clothing was for whether i'll put a patch on it or not um and some things just get wholly to the point there's just no fixing that um and then i have leftovers from cutting out knit things for clothing and stuff um, so, anyway, I've been cutting them into strips and stuff so I could do, and I'm going to fold this over so that my little scraps don't fall off, hopefully. They probably will anyway. But I've been working on this. You see? I'm hoping that that's showing good. This is latch hook. I had a humongous latch hook canvas and I just cut off one little section. I don't know if the rug will be as long as this is. I don't know how long this is. I haven't measured it, but um, I'm, gonna, I'm making a little rag rug. And what I'm using so far, this is actually a pair of denim. Like I had some very stretchy denim pants that I loved. And because I have big thighs, they rubbed and wore holes there. And I did patch them and repair them um, so I could wear them around the house. But then they ripped again. And it just, it becomes a point where you can't really, you're just repairing a repair. And it, it's like, okay, these are time to be, you know, recycled or whatever. And that's what I'm doing. So I have this. That's what the darker maroony color is. And these I had to cut thinner because this one does stretch good that way. But the way I cut it, it doesn't have as much stretch as some of this other so, and that light purple was a pair of lightweight jogger pants I had that I loved. But they were very thin already. So, when it rubbed the whole, that's what happens to a lot of my pants between my thighs because they're so big. It rubs and it wears a hole. 
especially if it's something I wear a lot. So, uh, and you really couldn't repair that because it's such a thin knit. It just, so that is that that I cut up. And then the blue, the teal that I've started on because I ran out of the light blue or the light purple. Actually, I think I have a light purple piece that's an end. This is what the, the lighter purple in there was. This doesn't want to focus. There we go. Yeah, like a very heathered. It's a it has a terry cloth back like a um sweatshirt jersey, but it's very lightweight. So and then this is just leftover from me making different things. It's just a basic uh, medium weight knit and then sometimes I cut it and it stretches this way more and then it doesn't stretch that much this way so it just depends on how I cut it I don't uh, I don't pay attention to that when I'm cutting that out because that, that's too cut time consuming and since I'm making a rag rug out of it it really doesn't matter these strips are uh, these strips are approximately half inch or so plus or minus uh, about five inches these are five inches anywhere from an inch plus or minus it depends on how stretchy it is if I can use it because some of them I have to cut in half because it's just too bulky but what I'm doing I can't use the latch hook like you normally would if you've ever used like latch hook which is normally used with yarn this is the latch hook it looks it's got that little thing that moves so normally you would wrap the yarn around here in a loop and hold it and then you would put the hook in one of the squares and when you pull it back you have to wrap the yarn around that little leg so so the yarn winds up in here and then it closes when you pull it through and then it pulls it through the loop you made so then it's kind of knotted onto the canvas but I can't do that with this fabric because it's too big so I used the loop to just pull a loop through and then I had to hand pull it through the other loop if that makes any sense so that is a little more time consuming but I've also realized that rather than going into the vertical like each each line you would normally put it put a piece in each one of these I'm going across a four square grid so like four of these I'll go and from here to here and that's where I'm not in it and that goes much faster because it's so bulky that it covers everything up so I don't need to be in every single place so that's something I just work on sometimes when I'm watching YouTube uh I don't know how long it's going to take me to finish it but it's it works and uh it's recycling some of the stuff I had I had a big pile of it like I said I I'll either put in a picture or a little clip of it, whichever works the best. And then I have this, which is where I've cut up other strips of stuff. <laughs> and if it's really long, I'm making it into a ball to use for crochet. So, it's like t-shirt, t-shirt yarn for crocheting. So I have a bunch of those in there too. So it depends on how long it is because I don't want a bunch of intersecting points when you're crocheting with that because it's it's a tougher thing to crochet with anyway. It's good for making baskets and things like that and or a rug, another rug. So that is something that I'm working on just to try to get some of these scraps out of my space so I have room for other things. So, something else I'm planning on trying to get cut out this weekend. I don't know if I'll get it sewn. I want to make this pattern here that I have. This is a Bogue pattern by March Tilton. Yeah, that's what that says. Um, it has, it's a pullover knit top, but it has a panel that's on the back that you would make out of a rayon or something similar. So, that's what I want to make. And this is what I'm making it out of. The stretchy knit. I'm using this heathered Yale blue wool bamboo lycra jersey. 
And then for the panel in the back, I'm going to use this. I really like those together. This is a rayon, a poly rayon. Um, and I have over two yards of it, so I can use it for other things too. But that's, that's what I picked out of my stash to make one with. I like this because it's a comfortable top, but it's still... You can see how they styled it here with the necklace and stuff. It's something I could still wear to work and be comfortable in, and but not look like I'm wearing a t-shirt. So That is what I'm going to be cutting out soon. Yay. I'm excited about that. And as soon as I get my fabric uh, clubs in, I'll share those. I'll probably take, show pictures on Instagram, so look for that. Um... I don't really have anything else to share for Fabric Obsessed today. I know they've been really small these past few weeks, but hopefully by next week I'll have something else to show that I've sold. Maybe I'll finish this shirt, more progress on my rug, and hopefully some bags, some more new bags to show. Um, now... DIY and thrifty goodness. I yet again have nothing to show here. Nothing. Nothing. Um, this Friday I did a roundup of my top 10 blog posts for the blog from 2018. They didn't all get posted in 2018, but they were the ones that were most popular. Yet again, the one I did about college dorm room ideas for guys and mom's perspective when I before my son went to college that is my top post since I have posted it it gets over 23,000 views this past year compared to number two which was only 998 views so that's just a comparison there for you um but I did notice that most of my top um, top viewed posts were about sewing. Uh, none of the yarny ones. Nope. I don't think any of those were on there. Nope. Most of them were about sewing. Some were for the Merry Christmas sew along, which I was glad to see in the top, top few. Um, I did notice that my free coloring page, uh, Free adult coloring pages page on my blog gets visited quite frequently um, because you can only have act you get the password if you are signed up for my email I do need to draw some more of those so maybe I'll get to some of that this week uh, I enjoy doing them I just haven't drawn any in a while to put up there and I really need to add some more it's just a perk of being a member of my blog newsletter um, which I am looking to revise my newsletter. I am looking to update the theme on my blog, which I have said repeatedly. I thought I'd get it done over the break, but I didn't. Because doing things like that is not my favorite thing to do. <laughs> but it needs to be updated and more user-friendly, if that makes any sense. I want to put like a directory of some sort on there so you can find what you're looking for more easily. And what uh, maybe some things I use quite frequently more easily. I have a page for Shop My Favorites, but I don't like the way it looks. I put a plug-in on it, but it didn't work the way I wanted it to, so it was just kind of, I don't like the way it looks. So that's stuff I've got to fix that I'm not looking forward to fix. I also have to learn some things about a course I need to write a syllabus for that I haven't done before. Never some my favorite thing to do, but it, it needs to be done. But that has nothing to do with DIY and thrifting goodness. But I have yet to make it to a thrift store in a while. I have, I did put some blog posts on there that I want to revise for the year. They were DIY project type blog posts. Um, I seem like I did more of those than I'm doing now. I feel like I'm leaning really far into the fiber arts, which I love. The fiber arts are my favorite. Um, but I still like DIY projects. And a lot of times they involve the fiber fiber arts. So, 
Um, I've debated on doing away with that section on my blog. Well, I wouldn't delete the ones I've already done, but not doing posts like that. But I don't know that I want to do that because I do enjoy it. It just seems that I've, it's just been more of the, uh, more of the fiber arts than the other and life lived posts than the DIY posts. So hopefully I'll get back to that. I have some projects set up. I'm going to be working on revising some posts where I, I didn't like the way it turned out in the end. Um, so Hopefully I'll have something to show for y'all soon. I, I do have a couple of projects in here I need to take care of. So maybe I'll be showing that next week. We don't, I know it's only a week and I have to work all week too. So I don't know. I'm also planning on doing the 10 non-yarny things about me. Um, I've seen a lot of people do it. No one's tagged me that I know of, but some people have said, they're not tagging anybody. If you want to do it, do it. So hmm, I think I'm going to do it. Probably put that that video up to, tomorrow. Because i got to get this one done and put up today. And it's gone pretty long. I'm thinking I can edit out a bunch of pieces where I was just struggling to put my yarn back in the bag. Or my stuff back in the bag. So we'll see how that goes. Um, Anything coming up? Mm -hmm. I'm working on... A, well... In my brain. I haven't put it on paper. <laughs> I'm working on a afghan pattern that I want to do. And I'd like to have a crochet along for it. Um, I'd like to know how y'all feel about that. Because um, I probably... I, my thoughts are to start it in July. So that you'd have an afghan by the end of the year when it starts getting colder. Hopefully. So, I don't know. We'll see. I usually do my sew along, my Merry Christmas sew along then, but I don't know if we're doing it again this year or not. It's just that we feel people are just getting the free patterns and not really participating in the group like we'd hope. So, that kind of stinks when that happens. Um, the ones that do participate seem to enjoy it a lot. Like I said, I did get a lot of hits on my blogs about it, but eh, I just don't. My, my, I am trying to drive more people to my blog because the more subscribers you have, the more opportunities you have with affiliates and the more likely I am to be able to do this full time versus the teaching as well, which I do enjoy teaching, but if I could do this full time, that's what I'd like to do. Um, so when people don't participate or they just want the free pattern, it makes it kind of not fun to do for me because my whole point is to get people involved maybe even learn something new to see the projects they make um yeah so it's kind of a bummer when they just get the free pattern and don't share what they make or do with the pattern so we'll see how that goes um now i am rambling so i'm about to I need to drink a glass of water. I try to put glasses of water between coffee because I drink more coffee on the weekends. And sit down so I can edit this video. And then probably later today I'll do the non-yarny thing video. And post that tomorrow. And before the end of the weekend I plan on doing the video for tutorial to this Tuesday so it can be ready. Um, I am going to do it about sewing zippers and things zippers and piping it really works for most of it around corners um or curves it's not as hard as you might think so that is coming this week did not work out like i wanted it to but that is life sometimes just all there is to it so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up think about subscribing if you're not already subscribed um share the videos with other people that might like it um I enjoy reading y'all's comments and learning more about uh, individuals. Um, that is my whole purpose in doing this, really. I do want to make it a profession. Not a profession, but a, the way I earn my income eventually. But uh, it, it's not as fun if, if I can't meet the people and learn about them. That would, that's my main goal. Because um, I don't have a lot of people around me that enjoy the things that I enjoy. Uh, so, it's nice to meet other people that do. 
I hope y'all have a wonderful rest of the weekend and a wonderful week coming up and I will see y'all next time.